Hello everyone. Welcome to the first week of our online learning in FIN 6028 Financial Derivatives. The topic that we will cover this week is forward and futures pricing and valuation. And uh, this topic is covered uh, in a series of videos that are available on Moodle. We will cover pricing and valuation of forwards and future contracts. We will talk about the relationship between forward and future prices. Uh, and we will be particularly focusing on the carry arbitrage model. Uh, we will also have a discussion on contango, backwardation and convenience yield and the future prices and risk premiums. And uh, finally, we will be looking at the pricing of options on futures uh, using the black shawl option pricing model. Now, uh, there are some key assumptions that we are making while we are doing all this. So, uh, we are assuming that forward contracts are not subject to margin requirements. Forward contracts are not centrally cleared, forward contracts are not otherwise guaranteed by a third party and for forward contracts the risk of default is so small as to be irrelevant. At the start we have to make ourselves clear about price and value as these are two different things in, in futures and forwards. Uh, normally in an efficient market, we know that the price is equal to value. Uh, however, uh, the concept of price of future or forward is different than the concept of the value of future or forward. At the start, a future contract or a forward contract will always have its value equal to zero because no cash changes hand when a forward contract or a future contract is purchased or sold. This is an important starting point. This means that we will have different notations to refer the price of a future or a forward or the value of a future or a forward. So this is the value of a forward contract at time t, small t, that was initiated at time 0 and expires at time t. So on the timeline, we are referring to it like this. This is time 0, this is time t here somewhere, and this is the expiration. So the value of the forward contract at time t that was initiated at time 0 and expires at time t here. So we know that the value at the start will always be 0. So vt v0 here will be always 0. The next notation is for the price of the forward contract initiated at time 0 and expiring at time t and it remains constant or fixed over the uh, life of the forward contract. So, uh, it is estimated here but then in the contract this price prevails still the time of expiration where the gains and losses are calculated on the forward contract with respect to the fixed forward price. The next notation is for the valuation of a future contract at time t. Again, we know that the value of a future contract uh, at the start, that is at the initiation, would always be zero. So, this notation here is the value of the future contract at any time before expiration, that is time t here, but after it is initiated, that is time t0 here. Then, the 
this notation is the price of the future contract uh, and we know that the price of the future contract will change uh, from time t naught to t as the future contract is traded daily in the futures market. So that is why we don't have a zero here and uh, we always refer to it like this. Uh, this is to just acknowledge the fact that the price in the future contract unlike the forward contract will keep changing as the future contract is traded in the market and the gains and losses on it are calculated on a uh, mark to market basis uh, daily. Now the value of a forward contract at expiration will always be equal to Now, the forward price at expiration will always be equal to the spot price at expiration. However, uh, you must note that this is the price of a forward contract that is initiated at the expiration and that expires at expiration. So basically, uh, it's a spot transaction. That is why the contract that we initiated here at the beginning was having this notation for its price. So the zero indicated that this contract is initiated at time zero and it will expire here at t. Now at expiration if somebody wants to have a forward contract initiated that expires the same day so basically it must be equal to the price on that contract must be equal to the spot price at expiration if that is not the case then there will be arbitrage it doesn't mean that the this forward contract will have the same price here it is just a parallel contract that is initiated on the day of the expiration and uh, that will expire on the same day. So uh, both theoretically and practically speaking this should be uh, equal to the spot price at expiration to avoid arbitrage. In that case the value on the contract we initiated here at time 0 should be equal to that is the value of the forward contract at expiration which was initiated at time 0 and is now expiring should be equal to the spot price at expiration minus the forward price that was fixed at the start of the contract period. So this is the value of the contract at expiration. In other words, this is the payoff. As derivatives are zero sum game, so if this is the payoff for a long position in the forward contract, uh, the short position will have uh, the a negative sign here uh, for this whole term. So that will be the uh, value of the contract at expiration for a short position holder uh, in this forward contract. Now we know that the value of a forward contract at the beginning will always be zero and we just learned the value of a forward contract uh, at expiration will be the difference of the spot price at expiration and the forward price. Now we turn our attention to pricing the forward contract after it's initiated 
but before it expires that is if we just draw the timeline so we are talking about valuing the forward contract anywhere here uh, before expiration but after the contract is initiated we already have learned that it will be zero here and it will be the spot price minus the forward price here so to value the forward contract here between these two dates we use the concept of portfolios as we been using uh, for pricing calls and puts so we have portfolio a here which comprises of a long position in a forward contract at the forward price uh, at time zero and portfolio B is uh, a position where we have nothing at time zero but we are going long the asset uh, the underlying asset in the forward contract at time T somewhere here and uh, we also take out a loan that will promise to pay the forward price at time t so there are two positions involved here one is to buy the underlying uh, asset uh, in the forward contract at this time and then to borrow a loan uh, which will be paying the forward price at the maturity now this is shown here in table 8.1 and we have portfolio a a long position in the forward contract at the forward price initiated at time zero and we know that the value of this contract at the beginning will always be zero and then uh, we have nothing here for the second portfolio because it will be initiated not at time zero but at time t uh, that is as i draw the timeline It is somewhere here that this uh, position is initiated so there is a long position in the underlying stock so we are purchasing the underlying stock in the forward contract at a price as t small t which indicates the time at which we are buying it then we have this loan which is the present value of the forward price because we are told that we are borrowing this much money uh, at time t and this will require us to make a payment on expiration equal to the uh, forward price so it's just like the uh, present value of a zero coupon bond at time t and the bond matures at expiration where the bonds par value is equal to the forward price now if we look at the payoffs at expiration in the forward contract where we have a long position uh, to uh, buy the underlying at the forward price at expiration uh, we will buy the underlying and we will pay the forward price so we will receive st with capital T denotes that this is happening at expiration so this is the spot price at expiration so we will receive this asset that is the underlying which is worth ST and we will be paying the forward price which is uh, established at the beginning of the forward contract uh, now for the second portfolio where we have a long position in the stock and we have a short position in the uh, loan so this will be worth again um, the spot price at expiration the loan that we have uh, borrowed at uh, time t will grow to the forward price at expiration but we also have uh, the underlying stock or the underlying asset here so if we compare this payoff here to this we see that these two uh, portfolios have the same uh, outcome at expiration 
and as per the law of arbitrage, uh, two or more portfolios with identical payoffs should have the same price. In other words, if we want to value the forward contract here, uh, we can say that the value of a forward contract at time t is equal to the spot price of the underlying at time t before expiration minus the present value of the forward price at time t again. Here we have an example. Uh, suppose there is uh, a 45 day long forward contract uh, with a forward price of $100. The risk free rate is 10%. 20 days later, the spot price is 102. So the value of the forward contract uh, will be the spot price 20 days later minus the present value of the forward price for the remaining 25 days at 10%. So that is 2.65. For future contracts, at expiration, the future price will be equal to the spot price at expiration. And again, the rule is to avoid arbitrage, the future price at expiration should be equal to the spot price at expiration. Otherwise, there will be an opportunity to buy low in one market and sell high in the other market for instant profit. The value of a future contract before it's being marked to market on a given day is simply the price change since the time the contract was purchased or the opening price from previous day. The value of the future contract after being immediately marked to market is always zero because any gains or losses are settled uh, due to the mark to market for that day. So the value of the future contract after it being marked to market is zero. During the trading day, before it's being marked to market, it may have a positive or a negative value at expiration, futures and forward prices will be equal. Recall the assumptions we made about forwards. Keeping those assumptions, forwards and future prices will be equal in the following cases also. One day prior to expiration and two days prior to expiration or more than one day prior to expiration provided interest rates on each day are known with certainty and there is no correlation between future prices and interest rates. If interest rates are not certain and there is a positive or negative correlation between future prices and interest rates, then the implications are that future prices will be higher than forward prices if there is a positive correlation between future prices and interest rates because future contracts will earn mark to market profit when interest rates are high and mark to market loss when interest rates are low. So reinvesting mark-to-market gains at high interest rates and refinancing mark-to-market losses at low interest rates. If there is a negative correlation between future prices and interest rates, then forward prices will be higher than future prices. Let's suppose we want to buy a stock one year from now. The current stock price in the market is 100 and we want to buy it one year later. So we need to determine the price that we are willing to pay for it 
one year from now. Now that price will depend upon the current stock price and the cost of carry. So let me write this. So the counterparty that is the counterparty in this case would want to be compensated for the cost of carry because the seller in the forward contract that is the counterparty will hold the asset for one year and hence the carrying cost of that is the risk free rate at least uh, that is the counterparty could have earned 10 percent uh, interest if we assume the risk free rate to be 10 percent on the hundred that is invested in the stock carried by the counterparty for the buyer in the forward contract so we can now estimate the forward price using this formula and using the numbers we have assumed to be 110. So this is the price we will fix in the forward contract and we will have an arrangement where we say that we are committed to buying one share of the underlying one year from now for a price of 110 pound. In our example of the one year forward, we did not assume any dividends or interim cash flows. However, there may be uh, interim cash flows uh, from the underlying, in our case, it is the stock or it may be in a stock index. It is easy to accommodate that in the formula. So for example, here we see uh, we calculate the um, forward price or the future price as we did in the cost of carry model. Uh, that is the stock price now multiplied into one plus the risk free rate raised to the power T. And we deduct the future value of the dividends that will be received at expiration. So this is uh, useful in the case we know that dividends will be paid at expiration and there is a single dividend payment. Now uh, we have figure 8.1 where we have uh, more than one dividend that is two dividends and we, we, we can see how uh, we can accommodate two dividends uh, in devaluation of forward contract. Here if we buy the stock at the current stock price, we receive D1, which we invest at risk-free rate for the remainder of the time and will receive this amount at expiration. Then at later on, we receive D2, which we again reinvest at the risk-free rate and at expiration, we receive the future value of the dividends received here and received here which we reinvested uh, at the risk-free rate. So it's easy to uh, assume here that any dividends received during the life of the contract are reinvested at the risk-free rate and their future value will be the sum of uh, all these dividends reinvested uh, for their respective remaining time periods. So we hold the stock here and we sell future at the future price denoted here. Now we have a long position in the underlying and we have a short position in the future. Because we are holding the stock so we are foregoing the interest rate are here because we could have earned this if we had invested the amount uh, that we used to buy the stock. So that is our cost of carry. Now at expiration, the payoff from the future is because we have a short position in the future. So we have a minus sign here. So we will be receiving the future price because we are selling the future and we will be delivering the underlying which is now worth ST. Remember we purchased it for S naught here. 
However, we also have uh, accumulated costs and those costs are the costs of carry because we have invested an amount equal to the purchase price of the stock that we could have invested at the risk-free rate and earned interest. If we estimate the uh, total value from the two positions, that is the long stock position and the uh, short futures position, we are left with the uh, future price that we have from the settlement of the future. And to settle the future, we have to deliver the stock that we purchase. So that is why you don't see any ST here because to settle the future contract, we have to deliver the underlying which we purchased at S0. So we are left with the future price from the uh, future contract settlement. And then we are left with the um, cost of carry here and the uh, dividends, the accumulated value of the dividends. Remember, we are entitled to receiving these dividends uh, because we purchased the underlying and we kept it till the uh, future contract expiration. So the future value of the dividend here and the dividend here has accumulated to DT. So the total value that we have at the end of uh, this position along stock position and a short future position is the future price at expiration that we receive and the uh, dividends that we have accumulated over this time and the uh, cost of carry which is negative here. So that will be the net value or total value. It can be noted from figure 8.1 that the dividends DT reduced the cost of carry. Uh, if we calculate the uh, present value of DT, we will get D0. So, uh, in that case, we can uh, rearrange this formula and uh, the future price can then be represented uh, as depicted here in this model. When dividends are assumed to be paid continuously, which is uh, a normal assumption in the case of index uh, futures, um, we can uh, use this model here to estimate the future price. So the future price is the current stock price multiplied into the base E of log raised to the power the risk free rate which is continuously compounded minus delta C which is the continuously compounded uh, dividend yield multiplied into the time to expiration. So we have an example here where the current stock price is 50, the continuously compounded risk free rate is 8% and the continuously compounded dividend yield is 6% expiration is uh, 60 days and uh, if we use these inputs into the model here we get the future price equal to 50.16 dollars when we have to value the forward contract during uh, its life that is before expiration but after the initiation uh, and there are dividends, we can uh, adjust the formula easily uh, with the present value of dividends at time t here and the remaining uh, elements remain the same. Uh, similarly, if the dividends are continuous, the formula makes uh, adjustment here for the time which is uh, time to expiration minus the time at which the contract is valued.